What is up, guys? Dylan Ryan here, bringing you another episode of Echo Craft Season 4. Yeah, sorry, guys, that I haven't done the Let's Play in a while. I'm actually working on some stuff over in our Let's Play world and working on some designs for some future builds in the next coming episodes. So I want to make sure that I've got everything correct and everything working the way that it's supposed to before we put out a video and then something ends up messing up. So we're just going to come right back over here to Echo craft because i am loving this server now i've done a little bit of work since the last episode not a whole lot of work but a little bit of work i can't remember if i had the beacon or not previously um if i haven't there it is <laughs> i can't remember if i did or not but i have been collecting up some materials and stuff like that to help us with a couple projects that we've got going on today in this episode. First off, I did go into here and kind of organize this just a little bit, mostly the redstone stuff. So if we take a look here at the redstone stuff, you'll see that we've got a whole lot more redstone items that we can use. I am missing a few things. Uh, I do want some honey blocks in here, and then obviously some of these aren't 64. I think majority of everything is, yeah, everything is except for the slime blocks, the target blocks, and we don't have any honey blocks at the moment. So we will have to try to get that here fairly soon. And then I did make another redstone shulker box here that also contains our rails and minecarts and all of the extra redstone that we will need and that way we don't have to crowd up our redstone supplies with a bunch of redstone when we need it for other items and blocks so there's that the other thing that i did work on was adding in a little bit more stuff to our miscellaneous shulker box here so this has mainly our spare items and also has our workstations and boats and beds and stuff stuff like that so those are the two main shulker boxes that I worked on here in between episodes just to organize some stuff a little bit better so that we have it on us if we do need it somewhere out in the world so I did check the lethal shop earlier but I would like to go in here and check it with you guys just to see I don't think we're gonna have anything sold but let's see oh we did get one sold okay awesome so it looks like we need to throw another netherite sword, our lethal sword, into there. And I should have some. I actually ended up dying a few times, guys, and lost a bunch of stuff. So if I'm missing some stuff in here, that's probably what happened. But yeah, we do have a good bit of lethal swords over here. Um, I think all of these are good to go. They should have the seven enchantments. All right, so we will take this guy out and throw him back into there and we'll just stick these in there for now so there we go another sword has been sold now i was thinking this is lethal defense so it is a defense shop but i haven't seen anyone selling elytras yet so maybe we make this a defense shop and a transportation shop or something like that if you guys have a better name let me know but i haven't seen anyone else selling elytras so it might be kind of cool to add in some elytras with them breaking and mending in the shop as well and that way if people need a new elytra or something they can come here and get it fairly cheap because i feel like people are going to be running out of elytras or misplacing them or dropping them in lava or something like that because if you drop the the netherite sword or any netherite tools or armor in lava then it will not burn up you probably know that but if we put elytras in there then it may get some more traffic to our shop which could be cool now this is the first time i am seeing this guys check this out i don't know who built this but this is ridiculous <laughs> this looks freaking awesome I love it. I love it. I have to figure out how who built this. Let's see if it says anything up here. Does it say anything? No, no, I don't see anything. All right, that's cool. I'll have to figure that out, and I can definitely let you guys know. But it looks like some people are bringing their builds up here. We've got a sweet-looking house over here. I really do like that house there. And then we've also got this house castle thingy majig over here. Um, I'm not sure whose this is. Let's see. Oh, I think there is a sign. Let's see. Private shops behind you. Okay. Um, dumber than a box of rocks. Is this someone's shop or what? Oh, whoa. 
This is someone's shop. Holy crap. Someone is selling a bunch of good stuff here. Uh, four diamonds per stack. Is there anything here that we could definitely use? Two diamonds per stack for that. I don't think there's anything really in here at the moment that we can use. But this is definitely going to be a really good shop. And it will definitely help us out when we need to collect materials and stuff like that. And we don't have a whole lot of time. Let's go ahead and head back down here to the underground. Because there is one other section that I have been working on here in between episodes that I do want to show you guys. So back here behind this we do have another opening and I've just got the enchanting table back here for the moment since we did tear out that section over there to add more villagers in. So we got this enchanting table here that is temporary and then we've got some extra areas that we can go off into. This one, I think we'll be able to go to this one in the future, but if I break these blocks, yeah, so the melon and pumpkin farm is right there, but I think that we may actually move the melon and pumpkin farm so this is what i'm thinking we come over here and we've got the melon and pumpkin farm we'll get rid of this i was testing out something and looking at how much room we had up there but i don't need that no more so we do have this area over here and this melon and pumpkin farm works really well and i think we'll keep the same design but i really don't like how it connects right here and i don't like how far out it is next to the path here so i, I really don't like that i think it could be done better so i think we're going to move this and maybe even double the efficiency on it so it's got one layer right now maybe we have one layer with pumpkins and one layer with melons or something like that and then this over here is also just our temporary little area to get crops and supplies and stuff like that and it's getting kind of filled up and i'm not liking how close it is to the path either so i think we are going to probably take some of this out most likely all of it and move it somewhere else but the main thing that I'm wanting to work on right now is obviously the melon and pumpkin farm, but I'm going to get to that here in a second. I'll probably do that off camera, but we do need a fully automatic. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> we do need a fully automatic sugar cane farm. So I'm tired of doing this or going up to the top and having to break all the ones that we have up there. So I think it would be really cool and really helpful to have an automatic sugar cane farm. So where are you going to put this automatic sugarcane farm, Dylan? Well, I'm glad that you asked. So over here, I've went ahead and made an opening and kind of just sketched out a little bit here of what I kind of want this room to look like and how I want it to be set up. This will be another main room here that will branch off into different directions. And once we move the melon and pumpkin farm, we can go in that direction as well. But this one over here to the left, I kind of wanted to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more terrain and kind of just make it stand out to the eye a little bit better here. So I do have this going down. These are not the blocks we're going to be using. These are all temporary blocks besides the wood and the shroom lights, obviously. We're going to be using that same design there back behind this and behind this and this wall and wherever else actually we won't be putting it here because i think we're going to put the melon and pumpkin farm right here i think this is where this is going to go and right here is going to be our sugarcane farm so it's a pretty big area we don't need all of this area but i just went ahead and did that so that i would have space to run redstone and get back there and, and be able to make some adjustments and stuff like that if i needed to so that's why this area here is so big but the farm will not take up that much area but i think to get the episode fully started here i am going to work on the automatic sugarcane farm now there's nothing special to it so i'll probably do it off camera and then we can go over it once i get done and check it out and maybe do some afking or something like that to see what we get it really doesn't matter that much though since we're on a server and this area is going to be loaded probably at least 40 to 50 percent of the time so that'll be very helpful so let's go ahead and build ourselves an automatic sugar cane farm.
Oh baby, there we go. Check it out. So I've got the automatic sugarcane farm all up and running now. I was trying to put in some more observers because there is a second floor up there. But I was having some issues with some redstone and it's really not that big of a deal. So I think we're just going to keep it the way that we've got it here. So kind of just run through with you guys how this thing works and all that stuff. I might change up these chests a little bit because there is a chest down here. And it is kind of hard to get to, especially this one over here. This one gives me a lot of issues for some reason. I can't seem to reach it perfectly. All right, there we go. But yeah, so there's the chests. All of the hoppers will lead straight to those chests. And we've just kind of got a glass front here with a little design. And as you can see, we've got the observers back there. We've also got some shroom lights in here. We've got a divider here so that when the pistons push, they don't push the sugar cane over to the other side and not go into the hoppers. And I do have the hoppers like this just because sometimes when it does push the sugar cane and it breaks, it sometimes will land right there. But then when it goes off again, and sometimes even when it lands there, it still gets picked up. So that's why I've got the hoppers even there. That seems to really help not lose as much sugar cane. And then we've got some of our design blocks back here like we've been doing. I went ahead and did those to these sides over here as well. This room is a little weird because it is one taller. I thought about bringing it down to make it three tall like the other ones, but it it just didn't look right. So I think we're going to keep it like this. Unless something changes, then I'll let you guys know. Whenever the sugar cane down there on the end of either one of these grows to its third stage, the observer will see that and then will send a redstone signal and trigger all of the sticky pistons that are behind these blocks right here that will push the middle and top layer of the sugar cane over to the side so that it goes into the hoppers. I've got crying obsidian back here. I can't really remember why I put that in, in the design, but I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it, so I think we're going to stick with it. Let's go ahead and sneak back here. I have left open some space just in case we did want to do some more redstone to this or do an upgrade or have to fix something or something like that. So this is the guts of the system here. One really cool thing that I am glad that I thought of is these right here. These leaves, when you place down a leaf and then you take a water bucket and put it in there, it will stay confined to that one leaf block. It won't flow down, it won't flow over, nothing. So we can basically have free standing water here without washing out a bunch of stuff or having to try to figure out exactly how to contain the water. So I think that's really cool. And then you can kind of see, yeah, there's the dirt right there that the sugar cane are on. So this water is hydrating the soil for the sugar cane. Then here's the hoppers that has come all the way around. The same thing is on the other side as right here. And then the ones on the top, which we do have the section up there. Those just come down via these hoppers here and get put straight into the system. Like I said, this is the same as the other side. These are all the sticky pistons here. And then we've got some blocks on top of that so that we can get the redstone to those sticky pistons. All right, guys, I believe I have got the melon and pumpkin farm working and upgraded. It can now do double the amount that it could previously. And this is where it was at. I just kind of filled it in just because I didn't want mobs to spawn and I didn't want to leave a big open spot there. Let's go ahead and go through here. I hadn't really checked all of the lighting just yet, so I'll keep that up just in case. Now, here is the pumpkin and melon farm. So I kind of just did the same little design over here. Basically, this is the exact same design, same setup, everything. It's just we've got pumpkins down here. Oh, and it just went off. That was loud as crap. But there we go. It went off. Heck yeah. Let's, uh, let's see if we can check this out. Maybe. No, wrong chest. All right, so it looks like some pumpkins came in there, okay? I don't think we had that many pumpkins, obviously. Good gracious. Come on. Find the chest. Thank you. There we go. All right, and we got some melon slices in there. So there we go. We got the pumpkins up, and they're already starting to grow some more, so that is awesome. If we come back here, I will kind of show you this. So this is the setup for the pumpkin and melon farm. This section here is the pumpkins and this section up here is the melons i'm not really going to go through this one like i did the sugarcane farm basically there's an observer behind this block and this block and then the same thing here and here i can guess i can show you there you go 
and we'll send it to all of the pistons up here. So that's basically how that works. Then we got hoppers here. This is for the melons. They'll come down and come across underneath the pumpkin one and come down on this side as well and it's just going to go straight into the same storage system not too much to go over there but that will definitely help us out when we are trying to do some trades and get some emeralds and different goodies from the villagers so that is awesome that is pretty much it for this area today i don't think i'm gonna work much more in here if i do it'll be something little and off camera maybe i've spent a whole lot of time on this i've actually spent probably four or five hours on this i think we're probably going to push that to the side for now and go and work on something else so one thing that i did want to do before we actually got into another project or going out and actually doing something there's one thing that's been bugging me and i really have to fix it every time i look at it i'm like okay yeah i gotta fix that and then i never fix it so if we come into here we have our netherite hoe and it is only efficiency four and with efficiency four i don't know if i have any i guess i'll have to come over here to get some shroom lights so with efficiency four this is the speed that this might oh well i guess we got haste so that's really not going to be that helpful is it all right now that we are away from the haste two over there let's go ahead and throw these down and let's see the mining speed so i mean it's not terrible but i think if we put efficiency five on that it will pretty much insta mine it and going and getting those shroom lights is already a hassle so i would prefer to have the best efficiency and the fastest or insta mine that we can get for the hoe there because we are going to be using a bunch of the shroom lights for our base and the surrounding area all right and then our efficiency five guy is right here we will grab one of those and go put this on with the anvil over here all right and that takes 12 levels not bad not bad all right i'll have to go back out and get away from the haste and all of that good stuff to be able to test this out. Oh yeah, it's definitely insta mine. Okay, awesome. So that will definitely help us out when we're getting more shroom lights in the future. So heck yeah. So one thing else that I did want to show you guys, I don't think I've shown you this before. If you have the Liberian villagers, a couple of them or two, two or three of them or something like that. There's actually a really easy, easy way to get emeralds. That's a lot easier than turning in pumpkins and melons and stuff to the farmers here. And I kind of just wanted to show you guys this just because I thought it was kind of interesting. What you're going to do is you're going to say you start off with just a few emeralds, right? So we've got a few emeralds here. And let's also go ahead and grab an axe here that is not silk touch. So there we go. So if you come up to these guys and you buy these books here right so you can go ahead and break some of these down if you want to so we'll just go ahead and break three of them down just for the moment here actually we'll break we'll break a little bit more than that shall we yeah let's break let's break like eight of them there we go perfect all right so once you do that then you can come in here and some of these guys have the bookshelf and the book trade and if you convert them then it's only one emerald for the bookshelf and then one book is one emerald and you get three books from one bookshelf so technically <laughs> that's it kind of seems a little cheaty to me not all of them have the the bookshelf one but there is a few of them that do i think this guy over here does yes he does so we could do more of those and then we could take these and place these down break these get a bunch of books and just keep going in a circle and it's pretty much just free emeralds and free xp so i don't know i thought it was pretty cool and i figured i would show you guys that just in case you didn't know about it now i would like to do something and this is probably going to be pretty risky and we might die a few times but i would really like to go and try and find an ancient city to get at least two or three of the swift sneak three books and also i think they're echo shards or something i can never remember the name of them but they're used to make the recovery compass and i think that would be really cool to have and we can maybe even sell them if we got enough of them but going to the ancient city is definitely going to be risky so i'm gonna have to gear up with some stuff here and kind of prepare myself and then go out and try to find an ancient city maybe set up a spawn over there and then we'll go down into the deep dark and see if we can't find some swift sneak three books and some shards to make some recovery compasses
All right, guys, finally, I have found an ancient city. I just made this little area here, so if we die, hopefully it won't be that bad. The ancient city is right over here. Yeah, there we go. There's the ancient city. All right, so we're looking for Swift Sneak 3 books and also the shards to make the recovery compasses. So let's just hope for the best here. We're probably going to get dinged right away. I'm sure that's how it usually goes. Um, no, nothing there. Nothing there. Okay. All right. Let's try to stay up for n now. Oh, that's not good. Um, Notch Apple. That's very helpful. That is very helpful. <laughs> that is extremely helpful. I will take that. No complaints. God, this place is huge. This is crazy. Yeah, I guess we're just going to have to go to these different ones here and just hope for the best. Hope that nothing comes after us, I guess. Potion of Regen, that's also helpful. I'll take that. Um, alright. Yeah, I'm gonna have to just get, I'm gonna have to keep on searching around. This is so nerve-wracking, but hopefully we can find at least a couple things that we're wanting here. Um, I do not like that sound whatsoever. Oh man, that's so creepy. Alright, um, yeah, let's check a couple more. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Get rid of that and get rid of that okay cool all right yes yeah, so that is two shards there i think we have to have eight to be able to make the recovery compass but that is a start and i am not complaining all right yes yeah, so i'm gonna just keep on doing this for a while flying around going back and forth and seeing if we can't find the things that we need here look at the c3 i don't really need that but whatever i kind of freaked out and just grabbed it but yeah let me let me uh just go around here for a little bit hopefully we will find the majority of everything we need it'd be awesome if we could find everything but i highly doubt it but yeah let me do this for a little bit and then i'll come back to you guys oh there's a warden right there i just saw him pop up i just saw him pop up did you guys see him where'd he go where'd he go there he is he's right there yeah, so let me do this for a little bit, and then I will bring you guys back in once I have found a bunch of good stuff here. Oh man, that scared the crap out of me. I already ate two notch apples because the this this warden guy, he's he scares he scares the crap out of me, guys. He really does. Alright, guys. Well, I searched that second ancient city a little bit and got a little bit more stuff i was trying to get out of there to get to another ancient city and i ended up dying of course because you know i've got to die every time at least once it took me forever to get that stuff back and then on the way to go get that stuff i died again because one of my elytras broke and i landed in lava and i had also made a recovery compass so i think we may just stop for today on on that and move on to something else just so I can get an episode out for you guys as I say that I'm going down here I just want to look I did do a little bit of research on the ancient cities and it seems like the best way to find one is whenever you're flying around and you're searching if you come across mountains so like big mountains not like that one like this mountain. Now, usually I've mostly been able to find the ancient cities in the jagged peaks and the snowy slopes, or I might, <laughs> I might be messing that up with another one. I'm not sure. But when you've got two mountains like this, this one, I don't really see it, but about 90% of the time it happens. When you've got a mountain and then you've got another mountain and then you've got like an opening, like this one right here is water. Um, usually it's better if it's not water, but there's a bigger chance that the ancient city will be right in between those two mountains. They will lead you straight to an ancient city, so it's really cool. That might help you a little bit. I know they're kind of hard to find. I think I ran out of rockets here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I am heading back to the base now. We'll check out all of this good loot, and then we will move on to the next thing for the episode. And we are back. Heck yeah. Okay, so some of this stuff didn't come from there. Um, but the some of these books here did. Alright, let's throw these diamonds down here and we'll check out those other shulkers. I believe those other shulkers are the ones that actually contain majority of the items we got from the ancient cities. Alright, so let's see here. Alright, we got a bunch of books. So we got Swift Sneak 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3... 
and then a flame. Wow. So we actually did get a swift sneak, so that is pretty awesome. Maybe when we head to the end, we can put that on our leggings. That, that would be pretty cool. I'm going to stick that in there so that we can do that. All right, yeah, so the Echo Shards, I think you have to have eight of these, and like I said, I made one, and then I died and lost it, so I'll have to go back out and get one more of the Echo Shard so that we can make a recovery compass, because that thing is very, very helpful. Look at that, we got more diamonds in here, wow. All right, we'll throw that back up there with the other diamonds. Oh, there's some more, okay, okay, I'm liking it. But yeah, so then a bunch of this is just extra materials. We did get some leggings here that are pretty nice. Name tag, another notch apple that is awesome. Some of the disc fragments, which is also really cool. So we'll just take all of this stuff and we'll throw it into, yeah, we're going to put this into there. And I think we put our name tags up here, yeah. All right, but I'm going to stick these into there because those are valuable. Put that there, and then also our notch apple can go in there as well. And then we can put up all of these books because I don't think we're going to need any more of these at the moment. So we'll put those up. All right, and then our other chest here. Oh, here's an Elytra. Okay, okay. Oh, that's right. That's the one that I took to go get my stuff. That's right. Okay. So golden apple... These are some boots and some leggings and a helmet that I had to make to have some armor to go back to get our stuff. All right, so majority of this is just actually my gear. So I'm going to just take all this stuff, sort it all out, and then I think we're going to take a trip over to the end. Nice, there we go. So I went ahead and made a few other things here just because some of the stuff I did die with. So we've got some new tennis shoes here. They do need Feather Falling 4. But any extra enchantments like this one right here needs efficiency 5. This one's good. And then the sword needs a couple things. All of that stuff, we're going to get those books back at the base. And then we'll come back here, finish enchanting it, and then we can go out and actually get the elytra. But I did bring you guys in for this. So we do have our pants with protection 4, unbreaking 3, and mending. And... We've got Swift Sneak 3, which costs 15. Okay, not bad, not terrible. I really do like this enchantment. It doesn't seem like much, but it really does help out, especially if you're building or bridging or something like that. It really helps. But there we go. Perfect. Boom. We got Swift Sneak 3 on the pants. And I did make another hat here. It is missing Aqua Affinity, but we will get that back at the base, which is where I am about to start heading now. What is Mad Tiger doing? Do you, do you He's have... gathering some soul sand, man. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I saw the name <laughs> tag and I started recording because I thought it was maybe like a skeleton or something that someone named. And I was just going to put like uh -huh. a little clip in the video. <laughs> and then I saw Mad Tiger. Uh, you can see it real good behind the bones, but he's getting some soul <laughs> sand is what you said. Yeah, dude, I'm just grabbing soul sand. Whose shop is that? It looks like a house and a castle kind of combined right there at spawn there's a bunch of good stuff in there have you seen that one might be mine it's the uh, quarry shop with all the ores and stuff in it your shop it's got it's got ores and stone in it yeah okay okay yeah i went in there yesterday and i didn't know it was a shop at first and then i saw the sign and then the other sign i can't remember what it said on the sign by the house i put private shops behind you yeah and then well the other side, oh, the store name is Dumber Than a Box of Rocks. That's what it was. Okay, yeah, I was dying laughing at that. That was hilarious. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, I went in there. There was a there was a bunch of cool stuff in there. It's a pretty sweet shop. All right, well, I, uh, I'm going to get back. Good luck on your soul sand collecting, and I'm sure we'll catch up at some point. Yeah, definitely. Man. All right, going? see ya. Heck yeah, check out our haul. This is awesome. So we ended up getting six elytras. And a bunch of diamond armor and weapons and tools and stuff like that, along with some saddles, extra diamonds, gold, iron. That is really awesome. And we got 12 shulker boxes, and I didn't even try to get any shulker boxes. These were just from the guys that were carding the elytras. So, since we do have all of those elytras now, I would like to put some stuff on them. So I got Mending and Unbreaking on these enchanted books. And I would like to put Unbreaking and Mending on every one of these elytras. And I think we may also call it Wings like we do ours. And I'm really considering selling these in the shop. I think that would be really, really cool. Even if we only do like a few of them. 
you know, just, just to see how it goes, I think that would be really, really awesome. So, I'm going to kill a bunch of these Endermen here and get all of these books put onto the Elytras. And then we'll take a trip over to Lethal Defense and see where we can fit these guys into the chest in that super small shop that we've got there. Oh, guys, I also I forgot to mention, um, let's see, this right here. So, in here, I actually took two Swift Sneak 2s and put them together and made a Swift Sneak 3. So, we do have a backup pair of pants. It just needs netherite on it. I forgot to mention that to you guys a while ago, but there we go. Alright, so now we can put this here and it'll open. Perfect. Alright, so right now, I've got this set as Elytra's eight diamonds each. I don't know if that's good or if that's bad. I, I'm, really, I'm really not sure, but... That is what we're going to go with to begin here. Hopefully we get some sales on it. If not, that's okay too. More elytras for me, right? But I am only putting four in here just because I did lose some of my elytras and I want to keep a few of them. So there we go. We got elytras, eight diamonds each. I need to put a sign out here too. Should we put a sign out here? It says now selling elytras. Yeah, I think we should definitely do that. Boom and boom heck yeah there we go now selling wings perfect that is awesome i love that all right guys that's about all the time i have for today but before we wrap it up i would like to go mining for some diamonds just about 30 minutes or so not very long and come back and fortune them and see how many we get so go ahead down in the comment section below and put your best guess of how many diamonds you think i'm going to get in 30 minutes 30 minutes later and i've got some diamond ore so i went mining for exactly 30 minutes not a minute over and this is what we ended up getting 64 what is the chances that we got a full stack in exactly 30 minutes i think that's pretty dang cool did you guys guess on how many diamonds you think that we're going to get here don't cheat don't cheat but I'm going to say approximately 160 diamonds or two and a half stacks. That's what I am thinking here. So let's see how much we get and we will see which one of you guys was the closest. All right, and let's see what we came up with. I don't think I'm going to be right here. Let's see. Oh, looky there. Oh, I was actually really close. I said 160 or two and a half stacks, and we was only 12 away. Heck yeah, okay. That is sweet. So which one of you guys got the closest down in the comments section? I am actually excited to see what you guys think. I will definitely be checking out the comments later when I put this video up. But guys, that is all the time I have for today, so I really do hope that you enjoyed episode 3 on the Echo Craft server. I got a few things to do in between episodes. I'm going to make a list and get all of that done, and then we can come back and work on the base. So look forward to that. I really do hope you enjoyed. If you did, please just hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I put out another video. That's going to do it, guys, and I will see you in the next episode. This has been Dylan Ron, and I am out.